Popularity is not permanent, and that's certainly true for board games. Avalon Hill put together their hotness list in every issue of the General Magazine. In previous episodes, we have looked at the first hotness list in 1975, and then again in 1980. But what about five years later in 1985? We'll take a look at that here today on Legendary Tactics. And so we move on to Volume 22, Issue 3 of the General Magazine, which came out in the fall of 1985, and take a look at their hotness list from that time. One of the first things that you notice is that the methods of evaluation have changed. Not only that, the editors of the General dispense with the idea of naming the games in full, instead opting for their acronyms. This would be unreadable to anyone not familiar with the games involved, and there doesn't seem to be any sort of a legend anywhere that explains it. Fortunately, I'm familiar with these acronyms, as perhaps most of the readers of the general were as well at that time. Also gone are categories like physical quality and excitement level, and we have a much more streamlined list along with some additional data that wasn't present before. We have a rating for components, complexity, completeness of rules, playability, authenticity, a rating for game length both shortest and longest, the year of issue, and the sample upon which the rating is based. And the final rating is overall value, according to which the games are ranked. So what does the top 10 on the list look like in 1985? Beginning at number 10, we have Firepower. Firepower is a game that looks at the armed forces of the world, their weapons, equipment, and fighting tactics from the end of the Second World War until the 1980s, when the game was released. Soldiers are represented as individuals, as are vehicles. The map scale is down to 5 yards per hex, and the time scales 30 seconds per turn. While it resembles something like Squad Leader, this is more of a man-to-man -man skirmish game. The overall value of this game is 2.57, with a complexity rating of 4. The ratings for this are okay, with the best aspects being the authenticity at 2.87 and the playability at 2.91. Games seem to range from about an hour to almost 3 hours long. The sample size is not large either, notably, with only 85 ratings. Number 9 is Wooden Ships and Iron Men, one of Avalon Hill's most popular games ever. It transports you back to the golden age of sail, where the wind was as important a factor as the cannon fire from other ships. Games could be as small as a ship-on-ship -ship engagement, or as large as a recreation of the Battle of Trafalgar. The game was on the last list at number 5. It still enjoys a solid rating of 2.53, as is the authenticity rating of 2.39. The components rating of 3.04 does drag it down a bit. It has a complexity rating of 6, with the shortest games lasting 70 minutes, and the longest ones lasting almost 6 hours. It has a very good sample base of 464. At number 8, there's B-17 Queen of the Skies. This is a World War II solitaire game where players take a B-17 bomber over occupied Europe to bomb targets of interest, while fending off the German Air Force and trying to survive. It's quite a procedural game without a ton of player decisions, but there is something really compelling about it, and the story that it tells keeps people obsessively coming back to it. It is a slight improvement in overall value over Wooden Ships and Iron Men at 2.51, and it scores very well in playability at 1.86. Its ratings are otherwise in the mid twos. Game length can be as short as 33 minutes or as long as 2 hours. It has a similar sample base to Firepower with 87. Number 7 is Upfront. This innovative design translates the likes of Squad Leader or Firepower into a card game, with individual soldiers and vehicles and no map board. Terrain, line of sight and weapon range are all abstracted, but the realistic feel it portrays is unmatched. Upfront's overall value of 2.42 is a pretty good improvement over B17. Where it really excels is in playability, with the highest rating of any game on the entire list at 1.31. This seems to be a little bit of an overenthusiastic rating, as there are plenty of very playable games like War at Sea, Africa Corps, and Waterloo elsewhere on this list. The shortest game being 48 minutes and the longest game being 2 hours seems about right, although this is based on one of the smallest sample sizes on the entire list at 58. Number 6 on the list is Squad Leader. Once again, the seminal game of squad level combat impressed the readership with things like its gameplay and how it represented tactical level combat from World War II. 
With an overall value of 2.31, this was a bit of a jump from up front. Squad Leader's components were rated highly at 2.09, but the completeness of rules at 3.48 was something that held it back from ranking higher. There's also a significant jump in the complexity rating to 8, when none of the previous games in the top 10 had been rated higher than 6. The game lengths also had a jump, with the shortest game lasting over an hour and a half, and the longest game lasting four and a half hours. These ratings were based on the largest sample size of any game on the entire list at 680. At number 5, The Russian Campaign. This is a sprawling game that replaced Stalingrad as the premier game about the German invasion of Soviet Russia in World War II. It was most famous for its impulse system that was better at recreating the blitzkrieg tactics of the time. It's only a slight improvement over Squad Leader at 2.29 in overall value. Its biggest strength is its playability at 2.12, although its authenticity suffers at 3.11. The shortest game lasts about 3 hours and the longest game lasted about 6. There's also a notably large sample size here at 540. At number 4 we have one of the squad leader gamettes, Crescendo of Doom, which was at number 1 in 1980. This expansion focuses on the first half of World War II, and includes some new nationalities to the game system like Belgium, Poland, and France. The overall value of 2.23 is a decent jump from the Russian campaign. The components and authenticity were rated very highly at 1.97 and 1.85 respectively. The complexity was rated at a 10. The shortest game is 2 hours and the longest game is 5 hours long. At number 3, we have the rise and decline of the Third Reich. This is the classic and possibly definitive grand strategy game that attempts to rope in all the various factors of World War II. Not just the military, but political and economic factors are represented. This had turned up at number 13 on the list 5 years earlier, so it's a bit of a surprise to find it in the top 3. Its overall value of 2.21 is only slightly better than Crescendo of Doom. Interestingly, its ratings aren't really that great, with completeness of rules at 3.81 and playability at 3.40 being the worst too. Its complexity is rated at a 10, which is no surprise. The shortest game is listed here at 4 hours, with the longest taking 11.5. Cross of Iron remains in the number 2 spot despite being a game at of the squad leader system, like Crescendo of Doom, and not being a standalone game. This one was most famous for reworking and improving the rules for vehicles and artillery from the base game. With a rating of 2.06 in overall value, it is a big jump from Third Reich. The best ratings are in components at 1.95 and authenticity at 1.99. The completeness of rules at 3.29 and the playability at 3.13 are not that impressive, and it is rated at a complexity level of 9. The playtime is similar to Crescendo of Doom, as one would expect. And can you guess what the number one rated game of 1985 is? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. It is in fact yet another squad leader game at GI Anvil of Victory. This expansion focuses on the American effort in World War II with scenarios that take place in Africa, Sicily, Italy, and Normandy, eventually going all the way to the Rhine and into Germany. It greatly expands the weaponry and vehicles available to the Allied player. It got an overall value of 2.02 .02, and it only edges out Cross of Iron in that regard. It also edges out Cross of Iron in most categories. Components at 1.93, Authenticity at 1.88, the completeness of rules at 3.01. Playability is the only area where it fared worse at 3.38, perhaps because the complexity of 10 held it back. The playtimes are longer than the other squad leader gamettes on the list. And let's take a look at the bottom of the list. For once, Kriegspiel is not here because it had gone out of print by this time. Instead we have Tactics 2, the gateway war game that started it all. This was always intended to be a fun and light war game, an abstracted conflict in cardboard that started the entire hobby. It is at the bottom of the list with a significantly bad rating of 5.62. It did decently in terms of completeness of rules at 2.79, but with components at 5.25 and authenticity at 6.34, it was never going to place that highly. Among the names we see here at the bottom are some familiar ones that actually had been ranked quite highly 10 years previously. Richtofen's War, the classic game of World War I aerial combat, had been ranked at number 3 just 10 years before. 
only here it had fallen to number 46 out of 55, with an overall value of 4.14. It still ranks pretty decently in playability at 2.91. Luftwaffe is also a game that had fallen greatly in the standings. This game that recreates the air war over Germany from 1943 to 1945 had been at number 9 in 1975. In 1985, it sat at number 52, with an overall value of 4.45 and no great ratings to speak of. Finally, the game of France 1940 sits on this list at number 53 out of 55, with an overall value of 4.79 and with ratings marginally better than Luftwaffe. It had sat on this list at number 8 back in 1975. And that is it for the hotness list of 1985. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe down below. This is Legendary Tactics.